New Hope TV, your encounter with God. We're talking about God's love that comes to our lives, which makes us love ourselves. Loving ourselves is so very important because we have to be comfortable. Listen to this very carefully. Enjoy God's love and deeply celebrate that and be absolutely comfortable in His love deep in the core of your being and realize that you're deeply loved. Realize you also have to live with yourself forever and you deserve by His love to love yourself, to be absolutely comfortable with yourself. And that's self-love. Now, when you accept, you know, when I asked you a question some time back, do you love yourself as much as God loves you? Many people say, no, I cannot love myself as God loves me. Because you know what? There's this un uneasy feeling that you're not good enough. You're not worth. You don't deserve to be loved. If, if somebody knows everything about me and all my sin that I committed and all the horrible things that I've done in my life, all the wretched things that I've done in my life, all the miserable things that I've said and done in my life, nobody in the world will love me. Now listen to this. That is a lie and you are locking yourself up, not only from yourself, not only from others, from God himself. Because when you put that boundaries, when you put that boundaries, and when that is unbelief, when you have that unbelief, even God cannot break into that. Because that is why in Romans, you know, in the 12th chapter of Romans, Paul says a very interesting thing. He says that everything that does not come by faith is sin. Everything. I'll just read that for you. Romans 14 verse 23. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats. Because, he eat, because his eating is not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is sin. In other words, if I don't believe that I'm good enough, if I don't believe that God loves me 100% without any partiality, that becomes sin to me. You know, in Hebrews chapter 3 and in verse 12, he says that he, he calls unbelief, actually he calls unbelief as evil. And this is Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. Take care, brethren, there is not be any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. So, if I say God doesn't love me, if I say I'm no good, and if I believe, and if I believe that I'm not value, and if I don't have sufficient faith to believe that I'm awesome, I go off, not only I sin, I go off from the living God. And when I go off from the living God, that becomes hell. Loving yourself to believe that God loves you and therefore you are precious, you are awesome, and you are wonderful. And sometimes because of this, we feel that we are no good. We stay in laziness, we stay stubborn, we get stuck in that place. Because you don't believe in the awesome power that God makes it available for you. In America, there's a very famous statue called the Statue of Liberty. And I was talking to one of my friends in America, who's a Christian counselor. And um, I was telling him, that uh, his name is Dr. Jerry Duncan. He's also my mentor, a person who, who disciples me and helps me to be a better counselor. And I told Dr. Jerry, you know, in America, you have a statue called the Statue of Liberty. 
but I think there should be a statue opposite that and uh, there must be a statue of responsibility also. You know, some, as long as you keep blaming yourself and saying that I'm of no value and no significance, you will not take responsibility by the power of God to move on. Now talking about self-love, self-love says, I love myself and I believe that God has given me immense gifting and talent and I can move on. I can take responsibility for my life. There are many young people that I've seen who are very talented and gifted. But because of what happened in early childhood, because they didn't have a perfect father or a mother, they grew up with a lot of difficulties. And I'm, I'm not saying that is not, that's not painful. I'm not even saying that is easy. No, I'm not underplaying whatever happened in your childhood. But I want you to experience God's love. And I want you to love yourself enough to move on. Tell yourself this one. I deserve great things in my life. I deserve to move on. I deserve to achieve something great for the God, God's glory. I cannot be idle. Self-love says, because God loves me, I must be gifted and talented. I must be with this power, love myself enough to take responsibility for my life and move on. You know, in Psalm, the psalmist says something about God's creation and how God created us. And part of self-love is to realize how precious, how awesome, how amazing you are. When I came to realize this truth, this truth changed my life completely. And in Psalm 113, in verse 13, it says, For, for, you, for you found my innermost parts, you own me in my mother's womb, I give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. 90% of people, they don't know it in their soul, in the core of their being, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. We believe a lie about ourselves and for years we have lived that lie. That I'm ordinary, I'm no good, I'm not significant, I'm not precious. In the name of Christ will you destroy those lies. And begin to love yourself enough and say, wow. You know, when it says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, what it really means is, that every part of our body is put together in an awesome, wonderful way. Let's take the brain. You know, when I first started studying about the brain, they said that there's about 3 billion neurons in your brain. And then I came to know there were 6 billion. Now they're saying that there are hundred billion, not million, billion neurons in our brain. The world population is only seven billion. You know, there are hundred billion neurons in your brain. And you think you are stupid? Even if your teacher told you you are stupid, please forgive them for they did not know what they are saying. Will you start believing what God says about you? God says, my son, my daughter, I've given you 100 billion neurons. You know, if by chance, if we had to live in this world for another 3 million years, your brain has enough capacity to remember everything, that much store place, 
that much storage we have memory storage in our brain no computer can have that loving yourself says oh my gosh you need to pray and say god i'm so sorry for thinking that i'm a nobody when you have made me simply awesome in psalm in the 8th chapter we talk about loving yourself you need to realize that you are simply awesome and amazing and because of god and his love you need to say you're gifted and talented and you got to move out into the world and bless the nation in whatever capacity you have giftings and talents in take responsibility move on to bless society and church in psalm in the 8th chapter verse 5 yet you made him little lower than god you have crowned him with glory and majesty i think most version in psalm 8 was 5 it says it made him little lower than angels but you know the real translation is little lower than god the message bible says is so beautifully yet we so narrowly missed being god this is how god has made us he made us simply awesome and amazing loving yourself will mean that lord i am simply awesome forgive me for thinking that i am a nobody you know they say that albert einstein used only 14% of his brain capacity and we have 100 billion neurons in our brain now once you start believing that you are brilliant you know any thought that you take dr caroline leaf who's a neurologist and i've done 30 years of study on the brain she's a believer and she said a brilliant thing she said as we think we change the physical nature of our brain as we consciously direct our thoughts we can wire out toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts i'll read that again slowly as we think we can change the physical nature of our brain as we consciously direct our thinking we can wire out the toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts now you know what carolyn was saying is that when we begin to realize wow i'm fearfully and wonderfully made take that thought deep into your subconscious and your brain will get rewired and once your brain get rewired you'll get recharged in science is also called neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is that ability of the brain which says the neurons are plastic and by way you think you can actually change the very physical structure of your brain and i want to say this to you personally i've experienced that in my life you know i have told this number of times in my messages in my teaching in this programs i was a dropout i was a school dropout when my son finished his masters in computer application he was 23 years old but when i finished my 10th standard i was 23 years old and that's absolutely true i failed in my 3rd standard i failed in my 6th standard i failed in my 9th standard in my 10th standard the final exam i failed i failed 6 times 
you can you can see you can you can imagine the shame and the rejection and all that I went through. But I want to say something to you. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. And behold, everything is brain, is heart, is soul, is spirit, everything is new. Now recently I was talking to a secretary of education and in a different state and I was giving them a proposal to consider a portion of script, a portion of studies that can be implemented for all schools. And as I was having the discussion with this secretary of education who's an IAS officer, I'm just thinking to myself, God must truly have a sense of humor, you know. It takes me, who dropped out of school, who failed. And then God says, Vasu, you just love me. Believe in yourself, love yourself, take responsibility, study, read, don't waste your time. Just love me and just love me. I will raise you from a school dropout who can talk to, to a secretary of education. That's God. That's God. Be it transformed in the renewal of your mind. There's another one quotation that I'd like to read to you. What you allow into your mind determines your reality and ultimately your legacy. Mark Twain said that. So, loving yourself would mean that I get to think about myself, feel about myself, what God says about myself. Not what my parents have said about me, not what my teacher has said about me, not what my friends said about me. What does the almighty loving father say about me? And if God says that I am precious, and if God says I am significant, if God says I am competent, that's what he says to me. That's what he said in his word. And, you know, in First Timothy, Second Timothy, um, Paul says to uh, Timothy, in Second Timothy, in the first chapter, and in verse 7, uh, we read this. For God has not given you a spirit of timidity, but of power. Do you believe that God is, if you know the Lord as your Savior, if you're a believer, he has given you the power. And start believing about the power. Start believing that you have tremendous power of the Holy Spirit in you. Power? Now, Carolyn Leaves is a brilliant thing. She says, love is our default mode. Our neurons, our brain was made for love. And then she says, fear is a learned behavior. Fear is a learned behavior. You know, when I realized that, and I said, God, you love me. That's power. I will not fear anything. He's given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You know, I want you to believe that you have a sound mind. And sometimes I get some crazy ideas. Hey, where did that idea come from? Oh, why am I thinking that way? And I go back to this promise and I say, God, you have given me a sound mind. 
love yourself. Believe that you have a sound mind by His grace and His power. Believe that God has given you power. Now that's why he told Joshua, you know. He said, Joshua, in the first chapter, in verse 9, he says, Joshua is a young man, and he has to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. And he lost his great leader, Moses. And he is lost and confused. And God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise. I always say this. Don't let the past paralyze you. Respect it. Recognize his pain. Pain is real. But let not the pain paralyze you. You might have experienced loss in your life. You might have experienced some tragedy in your life. Don't get stuck there. And so God says to Joshua, Joshua, I want you to move. Therefore, arise. And then in verse 9, I like to read that. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Don't tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua, I am with you. Joshua, don't fear. Joshua, believe in yourself. You know why? You know, my, my daughter, when she was studying, she had difficulty in Hindi. So we identified a Hindi t teacher, a professor, retired person. And I met him and I told him that my daughter needs some help in Hindi. He said, fine. So the next day I brought my daughter and I told Kavita, he is your new teacher. And this elderly man looked at my daughter. The opening words were so beautiful. He said, Kavita, I want to say three things to you. First, believe in God. Second, believe in me as your teacher. And the third thing is that is so beautiful. Kavita, I want you to believe in yourself that you can study Hindi. That changed her actually. She was getting so less marks in Hindi. Finally, in her final exam, her marks in English and in Hindi was equally good. Self-love means I love myself. I believe in myself because God loves me and believes in me. May God bless you.